to follow on from the previous video that I recorded about AWS IoT and the uh, the temperature sensor here, the Dallas DS18B20. I thought in this video I would go through the exercise of selecting the data within AWS IoT and using a rule to uh, process it using AWS Lambda. So in this example, I'm going to take some live data from these temperature sensors and process it through AWS Lambda, ending up with the data stored in AWS S3. So uh, if you watch the last video, you'll see I've changed the configuration a little bit. So I've, I've now put the sensor on this uh, smaller circuit board, but other um, breadboard rather, but other than that, it's the same configuration. Uh, this board here is a GSM module, which I won't be using today, but this, so this is like a preview of a later video where I'm going to be using the GSM module from the Raspberry Pi W. Let's remind ourselves, first of all, what the client on the Raspberry Pi side looks like. So if we have a look in the Amazon supplied code here. I made some modifications here in the last video to read the temperature from the temperature sensor. And um, I've just modified it a little bit more um, again. And so now what we've got is within each message, we've got the temperature reading and we've got this field sensor ID, which is the unique ID, the 64 bit ID of each DS18B20. So each message will have its own unique sensor ID. And uh, as before, I'm sending to uh, as before, I'm sending to this context here with temperature slash and then the name of the sensor ID again. So I can pick those up in the Amazon AWS IoT console. So if we switch back to AWS IoT, so what we're going to do here is we're going to use this rules section here to define a rule that allows AWS IoT to route the data to another part of the system. In, in this case, we're going to actually route it to AWS Lambda, which is going to do some trivial manipulation on the on the data and, and then write it into S3, which is basically just a file store, the AWS file store. Now, before we go through the create a rule, I want to I want to do it the other way around, really. I want to go and actually create the Lambda first. So go and create the Lambda function. So if we go into Lambda And I'm going to create a new function. We're going to go with Python 3.6. I'll start with the hello world. So this here, the, the trigger section, this allows you to attach a trigger that actually calls the Lambda function. I'm going to skip this for now and I'm going to go back at the end and uh, connect up the AWS IoT is the trigger into Lambda. So for now, we'll, we'll just say next there. And we'll say get field readings. Say stream of temperature readings. OK, so this is the uh, the Lambda code. This is actually what will run when a message comes in and it gets linked here. So this Lambda handler is where the the message comes in. So this field here, event, will actually contain the message, the JSON package that we've sent from the Raspberry Pi. So rather than just print it out as this example does, I'm going to 
uh, put in some some different processing in here. So let me just mark that up and insert my code. So as before, we have the Lambda handler here. But what I'm doing is extracting the sensor ID, adding .json onto it. So this is going to be the file name in Amazon S3. And then I'm calling this function here, write to S3 to write the temperature value. So that function is just here. And as you see, I'm using this library bot03, which is the way that uh, programs can use the API that connects into Amazon S3. So this is an Amazon supplied library. So first of all, we construct some JSON using the temperature value that we've just received. And then we do this bucket function. So temperature readings is the is the bucket name that I've created on S3. And we're doing put object. So key here is the is the file name that we defined up here, sensor id.json. And we're passing through the JSON data. So it's really quite a simple function that we've got here just to write things into S3. So that's basically all we need now. Um, the other important thing that we have to do here, we have to choose a role. Um, so this this defines the kind of security capabilities of um, of the Lambda function, because obviously the when the Lambda function runs, it has to access systems that belong to you and, and might not be in the same place. And therefore, we need to define what rights the Lambda function has to access other systems. So I'm going to say choose existing role. I'm going to pick up this role that I already created here called access S3 bucket. So this was based on one of the standard templates from Amazon. And I've just allowed this uh, function to have have access, read write access to my bucket area on uh, AWS, AWS S3. So we say next at this point, now we get a, a summary of what we're about to create. And that all looks fine. So I'll say create function. And there we go. So now we have a function created and we can do a test so we can inject some data as though uh, as though it were coming from AWS IoT. So let's do that. So I'm going to delete the standard data they've got there. I'm going to say temperature 23.1, sensor ID, OK, so this looks like the kind of messages that are going to come from the Raspberry Pi, other than this coming from the actual, actually coming from the field will be one of those 64-bit IDs beginning with 28. So we'll say, uh, oh, I left a comma out there. Let's put a comma in. So we'll say save. And now we can do a test. So that says succeeded. Um, you can see down here, this is how long it took to execute. So, so uh, this is how long the Lambda function was running uh, in order to achieve that write to S3. And here, here you get the, the build duration as well. So this is how you work out how much the uh, Lambda functions are, are going to cost you so the clever thing about uh, Lambda is that you don't have to own a machine and keep it in the cloud. Uh, you only have to pay for the moments when Lambda is actually running uh, running your code. OK, so having done that, we're now ready to go back to AWS IoT and once again hook up the, um, the incoming data to the Lambda function that's going to run. Ah, no, one, one more thing before we go back there, we want to check on S3. So let's go into S3 and there should be a file there now that I've created. So we go into temperature readings, 
So here we go, we got Martin sensor. This was the file that was just created by the test. And so we can see it's 20, 21 bytes long. Okay, so let's go to the AWS IoT and finish the hookup. So as I mentioned before, there's a rules section here. If we go into rules, we say create a rule. Now we're going to say root to lambda, for example. So uh, temperature data to AWS lambda and S3. OK, and we have to define what data we we're interested in. So we'll say star for everything. And the topic filter is to match what's in the code on the Raspberry Pi. So we say temperature slash oh, hash. Oh, get it right. Hash. And if you remember, hash was the, the wild card in the MQTT uh, queuing um, mechanism that we're using for sending data into the host. So this is just like conventional SQL, except here instead of a table name, we've actually got uh, the the name of the topic that we're using in the message queue. So we'll say add action. And now we get a choice of where to root, root the data to. So not a lot of different choices here, but today we're going to we're going to say uh, invoke Lambda function configure action. And now we're going to choose the Lambda function that we've already created. So if I pop down the list here, we select get field readings, which was the Lambda that we just created. We can say add action. And here we get a, a summary again. So this is the routing rule that we've created, uh, selecting some data from the topic in MQTT and routing through to our Lambda function. So we'll say create rule. And there we go. So that job is complete now and it should be ready to run. So if we switch back to the Raspberry Pi and we start our function, start our temperature sensor uh, code. So we can see down here request one sent, request two sent, and so on. So it's sending a message every every few seconds. Now if we return back to AWS, now under S3 we should find some new files. So we go into temperature readings, and here we go. There's actually two new files here now. So they're named with the, the name of the sensor, .json, you can see we've got 23 bytes of content in these files. So every few seconds, these files will be uh, overwritten, updated with the latest data coming through the AWS Lambda. So if we, if we click on one of these and say download, we'll be able to see the content that we've created. OK, so there we are. So there's the latest reading from one of those sensors, 22.062 centigrade. So there you go. It's, it's not so hard to uh, get these messages routed to different places in uh, AWS. Um, obviously, there are more useful things that you can do with it. So you, uh, a lam in a Lambda, you might want to process the data, you know, like generate averages or uh, keep the maximum, minimum or whatever. Um, or you might want to route the data from AWS IoT to a, a different type of stream. So to uh, to Kinesis or to uh, DynamoDB. OK, so I hope you enjoyed watching that. Please give me a thumbs up if you did enjoy watching it and consider subscribing for uh, future videos and uh, thanks for watching.